Oh my god, I was just talking about farting. You were just talking about what? I was like, I did the biggest fart down the hallway. <laughs> Do you want to say that in the vlog? I am so sorry. <laughs> Welcome to Stripper Life behind closed doors. <laughs> Hey gorgeous, welcome back and welcome to stripper vlog number 33, 34, it was 33 last week, yeah, number 34, like, <laughs> I just can't believe where I've been making so many vlogs and I've just got, oh, just had a really nice comment coming come through on um, one of my older videos, so, Welcome to Stripper Vlog number 34. This week, I am in Perth. I'm working at my usual club in Perth, but before I get started on the video, I just want to let you know that my video editor, Jana, is available for anyone in need of video editing or custom graphics for their brand. She can work with you on creating a custom package that fits your needs. And if you do end up booking with her, you'll receive 10% off when you book your first month of video editing services. Just mention that you found her through my channel. Please reach out to her if you are interested or have any questions. All of the links and the contact info will be down below in my description box. So I actually love working with Jenna. I really like, my channel would not be what it is if she wasn't my editor. I really appreciate her creative touch and her attention to detail when it comes to editing my videos. She also has experience with YouTube herself, which I have found incredibly helpful and just invaluable when it comes to have, being on YouTube in general because she's a, she knows all the rules of YouTube and she knows how to edit so that I don't get like copyright claims and I don't get certain restrictions. She's very switched on when it comes to YouTube and YouTube's rules and I feel as though that has helped me so, so much, especially being a stripper on the internet and having things be a little bit tougher for me as a creator in that sense. So I highly, highly recommend working with Jenna. I, I feel as though she has given me so, so much support and so much understanding and we have a really good working dynamic together and I would really love to see you experience that as well. So please reach out to her if you're looking to looking for an editor or if you're looking at starting up a YouTube channel. Having an editor takes the stress out of YouTube so much for me and it also I'm not I'm not I'm not a technology person so it has done done me so many favors so saved me so much frustration so please get in touch with Jenna if that's something that you would like to pursue. But, man. Okay, so I'm in Perth. I got here yesterday. I booked a week at this hotel. Um, actually, I'm gonna... I am going to take this to the bathroom. Oh, I just realized, no. I was gonna say take this to the bathroom, but then I realized that the bathroom has a fan when the light turns on and I'm not gonna be able to talk. So I'm gonna have to put this in the wardrobe and do my makeup there. Why are hotels just not not designed for stripper vlogs? Oh, that's not supposed to happen. Okay, let's see if I can set this up here. Also, can someone tell me who picks hotel art? Because I'm yet to see, like, good hotel art. But that's just, that's just my two cents. Um, let me grab my ring light. This is my little travel ring light. Don't ask me where I got it. I literally can't remember. So, can I set this up somewhere? Is that, is that okay? So close, but <laughs> I can't bring it any further. Why? Okay, I hope that that is light enough. I think that I've got enough light. Okay. This is what vlogging in a hotel room is like. You have to like make make things work somehow. Because I can't turn on the light, the bathroom light without the fan going on. I've got a lamp in here and I've got my ring light. My mini um, travel ring light. So this is, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna start doing my makeup now. 
And let me tell you about what's been going on. And I'm sorry about this angle too, just this bathroom is not set up in a way that I can produce any more like tripod height. Okay, so, oh my god. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a toilet break before I like properly get into filming so that I don't like interrupt the flow of the episode or anything. But then like the toilet's just, I'm sure you can hear that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I am in Perth. It is Wednesday, the 16th of March. I landed yes yesterday. My flight was supposed to get in at 4.25. PM. My flight was delayed by half an hour, so I ended up getting in around five instead. And then the bag, like the bag, bags were delayed for about half an hour as well. That happened, and then my boyfriend couldn't pick me up from the airport because he ran over some nails on the road and had to wait for ROC. So check into the hotel, finally gets in, and he's here for like I don't know, like an hour. And then he gets a message from his work, like from the receptionist of his work, saying that someone at um, at his place of work tested positive for COVID, which means he has to go isolate for seven days. When I <laughs> literally haven't seen him in more than three months, I get here and like booked a hotel room for the week and he has to isolate for a week. Like, how does that even happen? Like, how? I, I, like, I literally was like, this has got to be, like, a joke. This, this can't be real. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> how does this even happen? I hadn't booked my return flight yet, but I'm thinking I might stay an extra week in Perth. I don't know. I'm going to suss out, suss things out tonight at the club. So, um, when the borders opened to the rest of Australia, <sighs> Premier of WA decided that he would put in put in place some lovely new COVID restrictions. So essentially nightclubs can only open to seated service only. I'm pretty sure it's half capacity, so 50% capacity. And when this news was released, the club wasn't even gonna open in the first place. But because it was like because the restrictions were indefinite and so many girls would like obvi like Everyone was kind of being like, well, what do we do? Like, we literally can't work. The, the club decided to like work something out so that um, everyone could work, which was which was really good, really thoughtful, even though um, it wasn't really the best option for them. They just wanted everyone to be able to work and have a source of income. So now every customer has to be seated to be in the venue. Like there's no standing around. Masks mandatory, like literally after, Queensland had just gotten rid of the face mask restrictions and I thought I was free. No, I have to wear a face mask at the in the venue. If you see a breakout on my face within the next few weeks, it's Mark McGowan's fault. And I just say like, if it was up to me, I'd really like to sit him down and serve him something, but nothing I can do about it. And um, just so you know, I had to like take an RAT within 12 hours of me arriving. That's just a condition of me arriving into the state because apparently I'm such a risk to WA, even though the fact that like COVID is literally like tearing through the city. And I hadn't taken it when, I was about to take it when, just when my, my boyfriend got to the hotel. And then, so we both took it, we both took a test after he got that message and we both tested negative. So I know I'm not going to work with COVID. <sighs> so I am really, really curious to see how tonight goes with these restrictions. Obviously I haven't worked with these restrictions in place before, so I don't really know what to expect because there is like 50% rest like 50 restrictions. It can be annoying because Sometimes people are in the venue and they're just sitting around not spending and there's people literally waiting outside to get let in, but they can't get let in until people leave and there's people in there not spending money, not doing anything and we can't do anything about it because we legally can't kick people out of the venue. 
so I hope there's not much of that but the thing is I find when this venue when this venue has full capacity it can be a little overwhelming because it is a fairly small space and you kind of have to like push through the crowd to walk through the like to even walk through the venue on busy nights and I find like it can be like because it's there's so many people in such a small space it can be like a bit of like a sensory overload and I sometimes like freak out and I feel like my hustle's better when the venue has less people in it but I mean at the same time you've got it it has to have the right people in it and it can be hard to do that when some people come in and just you know around and especially with gas prices being expensive and everything that's going on in the world not complaining like completely privileged but I'm just saying it as like a statement, things are a bit unstable in the world. So people aren't necessarily as inclined as they usually would to spend money. But yeah, I'm really interested to see how it goes. I really have missed this venue. And I just, I'm just really curious to see how everything's going with the restrictions. Yeah. So I'm going to see how tonight goes to decide what I do next week if I stay here would be really nice to see my boyfriend when he gets out of isolation next Tuesday. So I might stay like a little longer than a week, even if I don't work, but I don't know. I'll decide whether I'm working or not. I am really keen as well to wear lingerie this week. Obviously I, ha I haven't really done a weeknight in a little bit. So I've been wearing more kind of dancer wear things. I feel like really nice and sensual and sexy when I'm oh, I should decide what I'm wearing Before I start my eyeshadow So these are all the sets I brought with me. I have Black purple orange ah! Red and blue I did get rusted on to do the oops to do the feature show on Saturday so I might save my red for then because like it goes with my feature show and like I'm more recognizable if I wear that after the show which is really weird because I didn't like um confirm if I was like available for shows and um I forgot to say that and I didn't really say it when I sent my roster in because I um I was thinking you know what sometimes when you do a show it's like you've got like it on your mind you've, you're thinking okay I've got to be available at this time and it kind of when you when you don't have that on your mind you can hustle freely and don't have to worry about like what time you have to be available and what time you have to get, get, go get ready for your show and I find sometimes that kind of throws me off because mentally I'm not in like the hustle mode I'm in I've got to be available for my show mode so I was like you know what I, I wouldn't mind if I just didn't do a show this time but yeah I got rusted on for the show on Saturday so they must really miss the show that I've done a million times, but whatever. I, I feel like I'm supposed to get my period soon, so I should probably save the black. Maybe I'll wear this one because I haven't I've only worn it once. Okay, so I'll probably do like a pinky kind of eye. Yeah, as I was saying, I feel really nice and sensual when I'm like wearing lingerie, but obviously like that's not really a vibe on a Friday, Saturday night. So I don't really wear it on Friday, Saturday nights. It's more of a like, woo, like party kind of atmosphere. So I really like being able to um, get in touch with that part of myself on a weeknight where I'm wearing lingerie. I walked through Northbridge today on the way back from getting my hair done. I was like, you know what? It's a bit of like, it's a little, like I'm walking back anyway and it's a tiny, like a bit of a detour, but it's still in the same direction. I was thinking like, I haven't been to North, like I haven't been to Northbridge during the day in like maybe like two years or something, I don't know. And I had three different men tell me that they loved me as I was like in the five minutes that I was walking through Northbridge. So I'm hoping there's something in my pheromones, pheromones, whatever, today that's gonna make men go wild over me. <sighs> As they should. <laughs> but yeah, I am really curious to see how how tonight turns out. Okay, that didn't turn out as pinky as I thought. Whatever, we're going with it. And while I get ready, I'm going to eat. Come on. Okay, it doesn't look like um, that appealing at the moment because the avocado has kind of gotten a little brown. Just a tofu bowl, add chili, add avocado from 
probably my favorite, one of my favorite places to get vegan food in Perth. And it's not even like really a restaurant, it's just a like little stall. I have to pick off all the coriander as well because I always forget to ask no coriander. The thing about like vegan food in Perth, I find the vegan food at places that aren't vegan but have like vegan options or a vegan menu, the food, the vegan food there is so much better than actual vegan restaurants or like vegetarian restaurants because I prefer to support like a vegan business where I can, but I'm just, I feel like I'm always disappointed about like vegan restaurants in Perth. So I end up like mostly eating at like restaurants that have a vegan menu. This place like Le, Le, Le Vietnam, Le, I don't know, um, like Le, Le Vietnam, Le Vietnam. Like ramen ichiraku, Lucky Chan's is pretty all right too. Little China Girl, I really like as well. But I'm always let down like by like Loving Heart and other like vegan restaurants and I, d I don't know what it is. It's just whatever. So I'm eating like, I'm gonna eat my salad while I get ready and I'm gonna, there is no space in this in the bathroom and I'm gonna have a kombucha as well. I'm actually gonna check out of this hotel tomorrow because I can get a refund for ch like checking out early. And I'm gonna stay with Miss S for a few nights. And then when my boyfriend gets out of quarantine, I'm gonna use some of the money from the refund to like book a hotel for us for a few nights or something. Because this hotel, I'm really not enjoying at all. It's 1200 for for seven nights, which is, I've definitely spent a lot less for a lot more when it comes to hotels and this hotel like it's an apartment hotel but apartment hotels should have like a washing machine they should have a few like extra facilities that like a normal hotel room doesn't and it doesn't even have like it's not set out like an apartment hotel either like if it's an apartment hotel the bedroom should be separate that's that's what like because it's supposed to be more like an apartment not a studio and I'm really frustrated it's actually like quite um quite outdated and i know the i know the location is good but it, it's definitely overpriced for what it is i don't have to worry about anyone knowing the hotel name because i'm not going to stay here ever again <laughs> but it's the the adena on barrack street but whatever and there are so many creepy sounds in this room and i don't i, I like i can't stay here for a week because they're f***ing weird the sounds that i've been hearing even though I'm going to be out half the night, it's still like, I would rather not. So now I'm in that predicament where I turned on the light just to compare like lighting. You know how like makeup can sometimes look different in different lighting. So I turned on the light to see how my makeup was actually going and it, it looks not as nice in the bright lighting of the bathroom so i'm hoping it turns out all right and not like a absolute mess <sighs> come on <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna go see if my Spotify is working again because if you watched my vlog last week, I was having problems with Spotify. So let me pop some music on, see if I see if I can listen to some music while I'm getting ready. Yes, I would like to actually connect to the Wi-Fi if that's all right. Okay, yay! <laughs> making sure my lipstick is perfect even though I know I'm gonna have to wear a mask all night actually I wonder if we can take it off for stage I'll find out because I mean it's like rigorous exercise so I don't see why you wouldn't be able to okay so it is 
quarter past seven. I should probably leave in about half an hour just so I can walk there and then maybe have a have time to make, take a few, few photos before I start work. I don't know. I'll see how I go. But um, I want to take a few naughty pictures for OnlyFans. And I also want to make a TikTok because I've seen so many... Um, so many TikToks lately about like people joking about becoming a stripper because of the gas prices and I'm like this ain't it, this ain't it. So I think I'm going to make a TikTok about that and then I'm going to pack my bag and then head to work. I'm actually like in a pretty good mood considering like what's been going on in my life. I don't really know what to expect but we'll find out how the night goes. I was, I did wake up feeling like really defeated. But I had a subscriber send me some like money just out of the blue, like just like just PayPal me some money out of the blue, which warmed my heart so much and it really made my day. And I used that money to get like a little mini tarot reading done at, um, I'd never even seen it before, at this stall in this like kind of marketplace area in the city. It was really what I needed to hear and I'm so appreciative of receiving that money today. It was truly like a savior and yeah we'll we'll see how the night turns out i'll see you at the club been on the floor for 45 minutes there's only a few customers in the venue i spoke to one guy who walked in and i'm pretty sure he's high he kept on asking and like saying weird things about dancing being like i would just want to watch you dance and then was like yeah but i want you to like dance somewhere else but here and i was like well i can only dance here so that's that's all i can do for you and then he was like okay well how much is a dance and i told him my price he was like sure and i said okay cool let's go and then I, I got up to like walk with him to like POS and he goes, oh, but I want to get another drink first. And I was like, well, like, like you can't drink, bring drinks in there. And he goes, well, like, how about I, like I pay for it and I get another drink and then we can go. And I was like, okay, like, sure, let's do that. And then we go up there and then he like, like tries to pull out his bar card. And then I was like, well, you can't pay with that darling. And then he like goes to the bar and, and then comes back like, I thought I was going to go to the bar to get a drink, but then he came back with nothing. And then we go to pay and he sees the price and, and he's like, oh, you told me a different amount. And I was like, no, no. He's like, oh, well, I'm not interested then. And I was like, okay, well, like whatever. Like, I don't know. And then walks off. But yeah, I'm pretty sure he was on something because he was acting a little strange. But yeah, it's still, early. still got plenty of time and we'll see how the rest of the night goes. Just after 9.30 now, pretty much as soon as I walked out there, I did a dance with Peter. Very like, good to see him again. So that was really nice. And then as I was leaving wet, like the lap dance area, I was told that the guy who, um, where the thing happened with like pricing before, actually took me $50 through the tool because he felt like, he felt, he said he felt like a dickhead about what happened. And then like, just like tipped me $50 and left, so. Okay, there we go. So I'm happy with that. Um, anyway, I'll keep you posted. I mean like a lot of people in 
have, have COVID, so a lot of venues can't open because they don't have enough workers to open. So instead of going to the casino where you can drink and not waste anyone's time, a lot of customers are coming here and just like drinking and chatting and they have no intention of doing strip club things, which is frustrating, but still early, like it's not midnight yet, still got plenty of time. And just gonna stay positive. Anything can happen and I'm just ready ready for a miracle. <laughs> again and nothing's happening so I'm going to count my ticking dollars. <laughs> Closed doors. <laughs> Girls do <laughs> even like subscribe to the channel. I was literally just saying to Elise, I was like, I was trying to let the biggest part out down that little hallway. <laughs> My face is not in optimal condition from wearing a face mask all night and just my skin my skin looks so shiny. Anyway, let's get the, the, that picture out of the way. Okay, better. So my night was it's one thing about like well, like the strip club in, in general, like working the strip club in general, but um, also like this club in particular, there's been so many times where I've made like, like I've just scraped through all night and then it'll get to like one or one thirty, and then I'll just magically make, I, like I'll just, it'll like, I, I'll just end up making a decent amount of money. It'll just be like some guy will like walk in at like 1, 1 or something and it'll just work out. So I think I had made, let's, I'd made just under 200 by 118 and I'll, and like the club, oh my God, let's get rid of that painting. That's why it's, and the club closes at two, like on Wednesday, or like Wednesdays and Thursdays. So I was like, okay don't have oh my god there we go let's do that i noticed this guy like me and another girl had just started talking to had just finished talking to this guy who was just he seemed really promising and then it just went downhill like kept on saying that like he wanted to take like take us home and like to like to a spa and we we're being like no no that's not happening um and then like when we asked for a tip he made this big thing about like oh but like can you get me like can you get me a drink and i'll tip you and it was like why is it so hard to tip someone that you've just been talking to that like that has been entertaining you like we're not even like waitresses that's not in our job description so why ask us like it was just painful and I saw this guy sitting by himself kind of near the stage and 
I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, why is no one, like, no, why is no one speaking to him? And I also didn't notice him come into the venue either. Like, he was young and um, just had the, had the look of, like, like a young kind of entitled person who often who are often like oh like i don't need to pay for this like i can get this for free blah 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 so i was a bit cautious walking up to him but like we were chatting for a bit and he was like like how much are like lap dances like what do they involve he went had been to like a strip club uh, another strip club in perth earlier in the night but he hadn't really like ever been to a strip club before like until tonight and he had like hadn't really didn't really know much about the venue or like the way anything worked so he asked me what lap dances involve and um like i told him like in at this club there's three different kind of like lap dances there's like the short and sweet there's the like captain's lounge lap dances which are like more like sit talk drink and dance and then there's like vip downstairs which is obviously the like the best option and like i explained them all to him i was like this is like this is what we have and um I could tell he was keen to go downstairs and the thing was I knew it was 118 and the booking for downstairs normally closes like half an hour like at 130 so I was thinking like oh like I, I said I said to him do you want to just do like a 10 minute lap dance and you can see how you because I knew he was get like I knew he was the kind of guy who would really enjoy the 10 minutes and would want to extend and like the way that the club is like is structured it's really easy to um, upsell from upstairs to like downstairs with like an with an existing customer and I was thinking like okay I've got enough time to like put like I, I might be pushing it to like do a 10 minute lap dance and then get half an hour downstairs because I knew he wasn't the type to go for like downstairs off the bat I knew he needed to do the 10 minute option and then like see how it is and then go downstairs he like agreed to 10 minutes we did a 10 minute lap dance and then um, he was umming and ahhing about going downstairs again. And then he was like, um, and then he asked, well, how much does two girls cost? And quote, I quoted something to him and he said, like, let's get another girl. He said, like, who are you picking? And I was like, well, it depends, like, it depends who you want. Like, what's your type? Like, I remember he, like, was, like, a sucker for a big booty. So I was like, you want someone with a booty, don't you? And he was like, yes. So... Picked, picked, a, picked a perfect girl. He books both of us for um, an, like a, a dance upstairs. And then like pretty much five, like only a few, and pretty much only a few minutes in, he's like, okay, how much to take both of you downstairs? And I was like, I knew it. I knew he'd do it eventually. And by some stroke of luck, they let us book a half an hour, even though it was um, like, they, were still, they still had the bookings open, even though it was after 1.30. So we did a half an hour downstairs and that just, that really changed. <laughs> I definitely made more than $200. It's just like, it always blows my mind at this venue. Like sometimes like on a Wednesday or a Thursday, you'll just walk up to someone like right at the end of the night like within the last hour and then you can make like literally like so much money in a short amount of time where it like compared to like how long you had spent hustling for hours beforehand and getting nothing. So that was really nice, especially it was a bit of a struggle with the customers that were in the venue. No one was um, really that interested to be there. They were just kind of like sitting around drinking. There were some really nice girls who sat at, at um, my stages. But other than that, it was a pretty dud crowd, I'm not going to lie. So for that to happen, I'm really grateful. <sighs> okay. If you haven't seen any of my Perth vlogs, my club actually pays me like by, like by, via bank transfer next week. So there's no money count, like I don't have cash like to count, but I have um, my my Z read like pretty much my commission report here. Okay, so my total commission for my total for the night is eight hundred and eighty dollars. Which I mean considering literally until one eighteen I was on less than two hundred. Blows my mind. I'm 
so grateful for that guy. You never know. Keep trying until the end because you like you'd be surprised how your night can turn like turn around when when you least expect it to. <laughs> It was, there were not many customers coming into the venue, it was pretty quiet and it was just, it was a very slow night, things went very slowly, so I am honestly so grateful for that. I don't really have a whole lot else to say. Oh my god, actually, yeah, the guy who um, was being a dickhead about like the, um, the drink and like, and the tipping, he, um... <laughs> It was actually, it was actually kind of funny. He said to me, I feel like I'm talking to the Terminator with your mask on. Cause that was something that he kept doing. He kept complaining about our masks being on. And I mean like, yeah, at, but also like in Perth, the, the mask rules are so strict. Like we can't even take our masks off on stage, even though it's like literally like rigorous physical activity. I haven't worked at a venue yet where the mask rules have been so strict. So that's been interesting and that's why my face isn't looking the best. But whatever, I'm grateful to still be able to work anyway. I am going to I have to pack all my things up because I'm checking out of this hotel and going to Miss S and staying at Miss S's place for the next, I, I don't know, week? Day? Few days? I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to pack myself up and I'll see you tomorrow no you'll see me on Friday for the Friday night vlog anyway <laughs> see you soon so it's Friday and I'm in the middle of doing my makeup I do have some helpers today with my makeup but they um, got a bit camera shy and left the room I'm like randomly feeling tired today but I didn't get much sleep Wednesday night because I had to check out of the hotel so I think my body's still feeling that I'm making sure that my like eyes are perfect tonight since I can't take my mask off um at all so and I'm just going to wear that um dead roses lipstick because you're not gonna see my like lips at all much like much at all so that's my look for tonight. Let's see if I can get them in the room for the video. I really want to get the dogs in the video, but I'm just hoping they'll come back before <laughs> before I finish. Hello. You right? What's up, little sir? So when my eyeliner is drying, I'm going to have my dinner. Just Nando's. It's kind of, it's like an Australian um, chicken chain restaurant thing. They have a lot of good um, vegan options. So here I have the Power Up Bowl. I made it vegan, so I changed from chicken to like this protein pat this patty that they have called the great pretender protein which is actually really good okay it's actually kind of burnt it normally doesn't look like that so i yeah i got i'm gonna dig into this it's um yeah like the power up bowl the great pretender protein extra hot and hello Okay, I'm gonna give these these guys some attention and then I'll eat my dinner and then I'll put my lashes on. Okay, so my face is on and I'm all ready to go. I've ordered an Uber and I'm praying that it doesn't cancel because that's, that's what the, that's, that's, 
it seems to be a common occurrence every time I'm in Perth. It's like the fifth Uber will take you, like everyone else will just cancel. So, and like on after work on Wednesday night, I was there for so long just because every driver kept cancelling. So I'm praying that this driver doesn't cancel because like, I mean, I'm already like going to be waiting like 10 minutes for him. So anyway, we'll sort it out. I'll make a TikTok in the meantime and I'll see you when I'm at the club. It's quarter to ten. I haven't done anything yet. I've spoken to two customers. We're almost there, but not quite there yet. So I'll go back. I'll get back to them later. Just hanging out. I'm gonna have a snack, and then um, yeah, wait it out. Okay, so it's eleven twenty. We're just in a half hour walking downstairs with the first customer who I, the first customer I spoke to. Um, he just like randomly came up to me and said, like, I'm ready for a lap dance now, so we left downstairs, which um, I was kind of surprised. I, I didn't think he was going to go for the premium option, but he did, so really grateful for that and I'm going to go out there and hustle and make some more money. Okay, so it's 10 to 1 and it is quiet, like really, really quiet. I have, it's really rare for it to be like this on a Friday. I think I added it up. I think I've only spoken to like five customers like over the course of the night. Yeah, one of them obviously did take me downstairs, but the other four like, no. The last customer I spoke to pretty much was like, oh, no, I'm not paying for it. And obviously you saw like in the clip just before that um, I literally made three dollars on stage like just before midnight. I went on at 11.55 and it was a 20 minute podium. It was like from these dudes who like sat down, didn't have any tipping dollars so security came over, they bought tipping dollars and then they didn't sit down again until I got naked. And so it's like, fun. Anyway, forget about that. Let's shake these costumes off me and I'm gonna go out there with a fresh perspective and Okay, so so the night did kind of pick up for me. It was a really challenging night overall like to be completely honest i found it really difficult to connect with customers i'm really lucky to have made what i did make i did have the um the half an hour downstairs towards the beginning of the night and then i just had a few 10 minute dances i think maybe about four in total and they were pretty much all in like the last few hours of the night yeah four 10 minute dances in total the half hour downstairs and um, some tips. There weren't a lot of customers coming in and like I mean honestly that was mostly because like there are a lot of people isolating in Perth at the moment. A lot of people have COVID, so it's not going to be as busy. The people who did come in there were a lot of people there just to drink. <laughs> please 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 go somewhere else. Like but like overall I don't feel like I even spoke to that many customers just because there weren't a whole heap of customers in the venue so it's not like I was like hustling and hustling and trying and trying all night and like talking to people over and over again it was just that there weren't that many people like coming into the venue so I'm really grateful for what I did make I know that it was a rough night for pretty much pretty much everyone I know that there were some girls who didn't get booked at all and I'm really grateful for what I did make. Yeah, there was a lot of like sitting around, a lot of standing at the bar. Just ha like not having anything to do. So it was a really long night. <laughs> a really long night. I did the com total amount that I did make. I have here. So I ended up making $1,190. So it was still... Okay, it's still tied out fine. Still, oh my god, I'm so tired. 
and I believe that brings me probably to around about two, 2000 for the week. So Wednesday and Friday so far. But yeah, obviously could have been a lot worse. Super grateful to have made what I did considering the circumstances. Still hoping tonight is, I mean, tomorrow night, whatever, Saturday. Still hoping tomorrow, <laughs> still hoping Saturday night is a lot better, a lot busier. And um, I find like Saturdays are generally like more successful anyway. And the thing is, so on Saturdays, the downstairs area, the high roller room, um, it used to, we used to only be able to book down there after like 12.45, 1 p.m. 1 because every Saturday that like there, there's actually a ma there used to be a male strip club that would operate every Saturday for the first few hours of the night and then they're obviously they're using that space so we can't get any like high roller room bookings which are like they're quite prop like they're quite um like that they're they're the bookings to aim for like they're that they're like the VIP options so it used to be that like the first few hours of Saturday you couldn't sell like any VIPs from 8 30 when we open until about like um 12 45 1 a.m like we wouldn't be able to sell any um like any high roller room bookings after 11 30 you could do like a pre like pre-book it but like you still like can't use the space until after one but they've changed they've since changed the male strip club to um only operate once a month so that means now every Saturday we don't have to worry about like the high roller room not being open we can like sell like VIPs early all night unless it's that one night of the month where the events on so I'm looking forward to be able to actually like because I found like there would always be like every like every Saturday without fail there would always be like a group of customers or like one or two customers or that like there'd always be someone that you'd be hustling and you'd know, or like they'd be asking about like a VIP option or they'd be asking about getting a private booth. You'd know that they're like the ideal customer to go downstairs and you couldn't, but because the mouse strippers were working. So I'm super excited to see what that opens up for us because it's, it's honestly, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, what I'm saying. I'm, I'm keen to see how it goes. So I am going to take my makeup off, have a shower, and go to bed. I do have a hair appointment. Um, the, uh, the latest that I get tomorrow was 1 p.m., so I have to be up. I'm probably going to have, like, I'm not going to have a whole, like, as much sleep as I want, but I'll probably just, like, have enough before work tomorrow anyway. So I'll see you then. Okay, so it's Saturday night and I'm ready to go to the club and make some money. I've got a surprising amount of energy for the amount of sleep that I've gotten, so I'm pretty I'm pretty excited for tonight. I'm hoping my energy lasts until the end of the night. And um, I do have my show, which is like going to be on like a little after midnight, so that's, that's cool. And I've got my Jessica Rabbit makeup on, not that like... It'll even matter because I have to wear my mask anyway, but I mean, might as well get into character <laughs> regardless. Okay, so going to head to the club and I'll see you there. Get my show out of the way and then we'll see what happens. 
please make welcome to the party of your hearts for the evening, Tori Me. Okay, so it's almost one. Haven't done anything after my show. It's been a bit challenging. A lot of the nightclubs have closed, so most of the patrons that are in here are like here because they can't get in, like, because there's no nightclub. So there's a lot of like young women, um, like just wanting to dance when, um, like, gasoline or Vader Daddy Yankee comes on, and like dudes who, like, are just there with. Hanging out, drinking because they have nowhere else to go. It's like I'd say the like like seventy percent of um, patrons right now are like under twenty. Yeah, but it's still like it's just before one. Still got a few hours left, um, and I can make it. I can make it. We'll, we'll see what happens. really really tired it was like it was a struggle it the venue was not super busy and the majority of people who were in the venue were pretty much in because other venues were closed or every other venue was at capacity so people were coming to the club to like because they had nowhere else to go nowhere else to go go to the casino people actually want you where you don't have like you're not wasting anyone's time or energy so I have never in my life had so many people like obviously a line that we get a lot is oh I, like I'm just here to drink I'm just here to drink and nine times out of ten it's it's bullshit they could go, they could generally go to another bar so there's obviously something other than alcohol that brings them here because if they really just wanted a drink, they could go to a bar. You've just got to push the right buttons to be able to, to be able to get moving with these customers. Nine times out of 10 customers who say that they're just there for a drink aren't just there for a drink. Like they are actually interested in what the offerings are, but it's just, it's just something that they say out of habit really. However, I've never in my life had so many people in a venue where I've worked at that have said, like, I'm just here for a drink and legitimately were just there for a drink. I remember even in the last, like, hour and a half of the night that these people weren't doing anything all night. They were just, like, sitting down. And the bar wasn't even that busy, like, so people weren't consistently buying drinks, they were just, like, sitting down, chatting amongst themselves, or, like, looking at the stage. There just wasn't any action, like, no one was even doing anything, and I remember the last hour and a half of the night, like, pretty much nothing happened. Like, I walked around the floor, this is peak time, this is peak time, this is when you're all, like, you're selling lap dances, this is when you, like, can make make up for your night. The last hour and a half, it was like no one moved. No, like no one wanted to do anything like, and it's just like, of course, like it's annoying because I'm trying to provide a service and these people are like cluttering up my workspace, which makes it harder to provide good service to my like actual paying customers. But also it's like, you're having a bad time. Why even bother coming in here 
Like you could be having so much fun with your time. Like you could literally be like downstairs having the time of your life. You could be like having like even just a quick and easy lap dance. You could have so much fun like in, in this venue, but you're choosing to just sit here. And it's just such a shame to see not even like taking it into consideration like the impact that it has like on us and our income. It's also like you like have the opportunity for so much happiness, so much excitement right now, but you're literally sitting there. It just makes no sense. And they just, it's like, if you're not having fun, just go home. You just make like the mood of the whole venue just like, like everyone has an impact on like the energy in the club. And it's like, can you imagine like if, if, if a fresh customer walks in, they're going to see, like see that kind of environment and they're going to feel that like, absence of excitement and they're not gonna like really want to stay and spend like and have a good time so and there was also a lot of like customers saying oh I can't like I'm saving for a house or I can't like I need to pay my rent next week and it's like is that not what I want to do I've got to pay my rent like next week too and by you being here not spending money you're making it harder for me to make my rent so just go home. The strip club is a luxury service. Like, it's luxury. So I'm just gonna summarize this little segment by saying, disappointing crowd, people. Anyway, I don't know. I'm, I'm over it, I'm overthinking. I'm just, I'm so ready for bed. I don't think I've ever been this tired while I've been filming before. What I did for tonight. Okay, so our total for the night is 660. Why did I take my eyelashes off when I haven't even finished filming yet? What's wrong with me? So yeah, challenging night, did what I could. I mean, it's definitely not an amount of money that I was aiming for, but at the end of the day, this money would have like made me super super excited just before I like like just before I started stripping it's it's fine and I only did two dances all night 15 minute and a 20 minute dance so it was it was rough and it's not often that I make less than a thousand dollars on like a Friday or a Saturday night in Perth so but it's fine nothing to get worked up about I still made money I know I went to work and gave it my all I can't control even though I wish I could I can't control the shitty etiquette the things people um, and people's own like habits in the strip club not what I would normally make but it's still better than nothing and like I said, that this amount of money would have made me so excited before I started stripping to be able to make this in one night. So it's a, ni it's a nice moment for me to like recognize and remember that. But anyway, I pretty much feel like I'm going to pass out at any minute. So I have actually decided that I'm going to stay in Perth another week just so that I can actually see my boyfriend while I'm here. So I'm going to do, there, there will be a, another Perth vlog out next week. And then the week after that, I will be working in Sydney. I had to postpone my work trip because of the, the floods and the wild weather. So I'm going to do Perth and then Sydney. But we'll see, because every time I make a plan, it like, it changes. So, so expect a Perth vlog next week and next week is going to be better next week is going to be better. It has to be. It has no choice. I'm excited for the next video and I'll see you I'll see you when the next video comes out. But having said that, the best way to keep up with me is probably on Instagram and my username is at hivipustler. But I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. It's an honor have, having you here. If you liked this video, please Press the like button and comment down below if you have anything that you'd like to say. 
check that you are subscribed and click the notification bell so that you can be updated when a new vlog comes out or any kind of video. Thank you so much for joining me here. I really appreciate you and I hope you have a magical day. Thank you.